Hello and welcome to Dr. Shiny Tarot. This is a daily pick a card reading for December the 7th, Monday. The purpose of this reading is to give you a brief piece of advice or to help your overall focus for the day. And if you're looking for a longer, more detailed reading, please check out my channel. I do many other readings, including monthly readings for each star sign, full moon readings and love readings, and many more. If you're new to pick a card readings, the way this works is that you will choose one of the three piles here and then click the timestamp in the description to skip ahead to the reading that you have selected. Now, if you do feel compelled to choose more than one card, that's totally fine. Please follow your intuition here. There's likely to be good advice in each reading, even if one pile is more accurate than the others. I have also added three crystals to aid in your selection. Uh, they are Dalmatian Jasper. Um, this is Jade in the shape of a kitty, which is fun. And Orange Calcite. Okay, so I'm going to give you 30 seconds, uh, about 30 seconds, so that you can meditate on your choice if you wish. And when you have your choices in mind, go ahead and find the timestamp for your choice in the description below. Okay? Okay, so if you have not already done so, please um, go ahead and select your pile and scroll down into the description and click the, the timestamp to skip ahead in the video to get your reading. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started with pile number one. Pile number one got the Princess of Cups. And then cross by the Three of Cups. And the Five of Swords is your advice. Okay, so Princess of Cups is uh, usually called the Page of Cups. Um, in the reverse here, this is going to mean that there perhaps is a little bit of uh, emotional immaturity here. Um, sometimes this is things not really going quite the way that you want or uh, to have a little bit of like a naive idea uh, of what you're expecting from others in a sort of relationship or emotional dimension so this can be that you're kind of like maybe looking at your side of things but not really considering the other side so much um, that you are perhaps like feeling like others ought to treat you a certain way but you're not necessarily seeing um, how you're coming across to others or that kind of thing. So um, it, it's a, a card that says, you know, you need to be a little bit more realistic or uh, to, to self-reflect a little bit to kind of see what's going on from an outside perspective um, and to listen. This is uh, definitely a card that's asking you to listen a little bit more to what other people are asking and things like that. So and the, you're being crossed by this Three of Cups. Um, which it's cross or influence. So the way I'm taking this is, uh, this means, you know, friendship and fellowship, happiness. Um, there is not so much like a romantic relationship type of energy to this, but it's like having friends and whatnot. So it could be that like, there's something going on between you and a friend or somebody who normally you would consider a friend, but maybe there's a little bit of a, a rough patch going on. And so uh, in order to sort of repair this or to make it harmonious or to get along with people or maybe, you know, even just to make friends, to make new friends, um, you're going to have to remember to sort of, uh, 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 you know, understand both sides of the story, but understand what you bring to the equation. Um, people, you know, some people feel as though others should just be obligated 
to like them um, as though it doesn't matter who you are to other people or how you treat other people. There should be somebody out there who is sort of your tribe or, or something like that. And, you know, I, I guess in theory with billions of people on the planet, that may be so. Um, personally, that didn't really work out when I had that mindset when I was younger. And I gradually had to kind of take accountability for the way that I was treating other people and I had to realize that like nobody is obligated to like me, that I have to be a likable person, that I have to bring something to the equation which, which makes people want to be around me. And, uh, you know, there are many different ways which you can decide what good qualities you want to really exemplify. And when you do that, stick to that and, and you become known for that. And that's sort of your appeal. And you can attract or repel people from you uh, based on those interests and principles and learn to live a more authentic life. And this is what's involved in the maturation of the princess here of Cups. If she's going to be the queen... Um, she's going to have to learn to be authentic and uh, understanding of other people and to give and take, to not just want everything to work out for her benefit, but to also remember to contribute something to other people. And this is what leads to these healthy friendships and relationships and things like that, right? So the advice for the current situation here, Five of Swords. So the Five of Swords represents a sort of uh, a mental conflict or... Um, just kind of a, a war of ideas. This is kind of oftentimes associated with like this need to be right and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, what, you know, in regards to advice here, I think this is saying to, to be careful to look at how important really is it just to be right? Do you need to always be the one who is, um, the one that you go to for answers or something like that. Now that very much could be uh, something that's important to you. Uh, you might care very deeply about truth. And so you may organize yourself uh, around people who have like an equal care about the truth. And so a lot of times, you know, I have uh, a lot of relationships in my family where it seems like the way that we express affection is by arguing. <laughs> and it's okay. We, we, we have a mutual understanding that the argument doesn't mean that something is wrong. It just means that we enjoy arguing with each other. We enjoy being challenged by each other and that type of thing. So sometimes this can be a good thing, but you have to ask yourself again, what sort of uh, dimension are you trying to mature in? If you are a person who is naturally a little bit more combative or um, somebody who likes to argue, likes to be right, likes to debate, um, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But you're going to have to figure out a way to balance that emotion and not to feel um, too worked up or angry at the end of the day when things aren't quite going the way you want them to. You're going to have to find a way to just sort of shake hands at the end of this argument and, and walk away from it um, without feeling as though you just want to kill the other person or something like that. Um, you have to find a way to agree to disagree, right? Um, so that's one way that would help you if you are that more argumentative type person. If you're not so much of an argumentative type person, then take a step back and, and analyze when you are trying to to be right, and, and that is kind of getting in the way of listening to somebody else, listening to their point of view, and just kind of being there um, and you know discussing uh, with people. A lot of people just want to be heard, uh, and you know nobody is really right because nobody has all the facts. Uh, the truth is always somewhere between everybody. Uh, you know what I believe and what you believe. Neither one of those are really spot on as far as the truth, but really the truth is usually somewhere between. So, um, you know, interacting with people who have different viewpoints than you is a way of uncovering new dimensions of truth. And if you can look at it that way, uh, then people that don't necessarily agree with you can still be a, a good resource, a good friend, um, and a, a valuable way to take a look at the world in a way that you might not have before. Okay, so looks pretty good for you. That'll about do it for this reading. We're going to go ahead and move on. Okay, so pile number two with the Jade Kitty Cat. What we have for you is Three of Swords 
and you're across by the Princess of Wands, and advice is the Queen of Cups. Okay, so the Three of Swords is indicating some sort of disappointment or heartbreak, possibly rejection or something like that, but you're, it's uh, a little bit of a, a down feeling, you know, being uh, uh, the way that I often uh, associate this is that a lot of times in, in life there are many paths for you to take, uh, many choices, and um, sometimes paths lead you away from others or toward others, so, you know, things sort of divert, and anytime there's a fork in the road, there's always something that was down the other fork, the other side of the road, which you, um, you know, if you're really paying attention, you're going to be a little sad about that because you've left behind something that could have been a part of your reality, an experience, something wonderful, right? So it's kind of this, uh, I don't want to say regret, but it, there's an understanding that uh, things, you know, good things are everywhere. And so you're kind of like heartbroken that you didn't get to experience something else um, rather than what you have experienced this time. So, and in general, it can be felt just as, as heartbreak or um, as pain from rejection or not experiencing some path that you really wanted to be able to. It's not always a direct result of your own personal choices. Sometimes it just happens. It's just a fork in the road and, you know, it had to had to happen one way or the other. So um, this has kind of been maybe weighing heavy on you uh, a little bit. And the energy that is crossing you here is this, or influencing you, is this prin princess of wands. So there's uh, possibly like a, a, a new project or something that you've been wanting to get off of the ground, that you've been wanting to really get involved with, or... Um, to be successful with so it could your your heartbreak or your disappointment here could have something to do with that with a, a little bit of failure or things not working out right uh, not necessarily it could just be these could be talking about really two different situations um, but they, they could be the same in that you're disappointed in some sort of you know failure to get this thing off the ground uh, and that could be what's what's influencing here you here, or it could just be that you really want to get something done, and it just so happens that you're experiencing this heartbreak at the same time, which is kind of maybe dragging you down a little bit, um, or making you a little less inclined to get to it, get busy. Um, but it is influencing you. It is heavy on your mind, and it is a good path to move forward to to keep working through this. If it is some sort of failure that you've been experiencing, then don't worry about that too much because failure is just a way of moving forward and learning. You don't learn if you're not failing, and, and you're not really trying hard enough if you if you don't ever fail. Um, failure is nothing to be afraid of. I, I love anytime I, I, get, I go through a failure, I've almost conditioned myself like a Pavlov dog to think about uh, Thomas Edison, how he failed thousands of times before or a thousand times before he finally successfully invented the light bulb and he kept on trying and trying and trying uh, because he knew what he wanted to accomplish and so failure was just a, a way of learning what not to do uh, to be successful right so uh, most of the most successful pers people in the world they do not shy away from failure they um they find it very, very important when they do fail to learn from it and to move on and to maintain a sort of confidence. So your advice for the situation is this Queen of Cups. Uh, Queen of Cups is very balanced and emotionally um, healthy, right? She has a, a good way of listening to her emotions and, and feeling them and using them, right? So this could be, you know, if you've gone through a failure or a, a loss or a rejection, um, that should teach you something. If it's like a loss of somebody who's dear to you, um, that should teach you, you know, how much more you care about having time to spend with your loved ones and, and to cherish every moment that you have with them and to be grateful for your own life and to not get too down in the dumps because they're all, there are these wonderful experiences to be had, right? If it was a, a failure in some kind of a business a venture or a project or something like that, then this is more of a indication that, you know, uh, what what could have been done differently? What, what can you carry forward? What can you learn from this situation to sort of, uh, 
you know, avoid that same kind of thing from happening. Or if it was just something that was luck of the draw, what can you learn from that? You know, um, if you're in the stocks or something and then you, you know, you have a one, one really big loss, that might teach you not to really put all of your funds in one source, but to kind of spread your investments out a little bit, right? So that if you do inevitably lead uh, or uh, achieve like random losses, at least those random losses don't sting so bad because you haven't bet everything all in all at once. So if there's, you know, there, there's all kinds of different ways that by kind of tempering your emotions and, and not getting too frustrated or bent out of shape, you can carry forward from losses and mistakes and things with a new outlook and a new way for you to kind of uh, pick yourself up and keep on going, right? So that's about it for pile number two. Very good reading with the Jade Cat. Wonderful little guy. So we're going to go ahead and move on to pile number three with the Orange Calcite. Okay. Okay, so you have the Knight of Cups in the reverse, the Four of Cups crossing, and the Ace of Swords for your advice. Okay, so, so the Knight of Cups in the reverse here. Uh, Knight of Cups is like a, a like a romantic. Um, he's he's very in touch with his like feelings and his feminine side and everything. I I, I usually call him the the sort of Fabio of the the deck, right? This is the um, reminds you of something you might see on one of those romance no novels with like the long hair and everything. He's a very romantic type of guy, but he's flighty also and a little bit dr uh, you know dreamy. Um, he gets uh, carried away with the romance of everything. So, you know, and especially in the reverse here, a lot of times he's not extremely realistic, um, but it can also mean that you maybe have been a little bit unsuccessful at um, getting things going because he a lot time a lot of times is more of like a dreamer but he doesn't really put a whole lot of effort or, or a lot of grunt work it's like there's this idea of how things should be or what he wants right but he's not really willing to put in the work to make it happen and he's not interested in the more realistic nitty-gritty part of life right so you know i imagine somebody like you know like maybe somebody imagines a great home a big home or something like that but then they don't necessarily think of all the work that's required to clean to clean that home you know it's like i want 20 bathrooms in my house but i don't want to clean 20 toilets <laughs> so uh it's about like taking that dreamy uh, over the top um romantic type energy and grounding it in some kind of reality and making it a little bit more realistic right um but also, uh, in, in personal, and in, in like, if it's not something quite so grandiose, like you're not interested in a house or anything, but you want to accomplish some goal or, or some project, or you want to do something like uh, some kind of a business that you want to run or something like that. If you're kind of getting too grandiose with your ideas, then that can uh, affect you and, and make you a little less than successful. So what we have crossing you here is this Four of Cups. This can mean uh, a, a lot of times Four of Cups is kind of like a bad attitude or it's it's like you have opportunities coming at you, but you're not seeing them. You're not paying attention to them. You're just sort of you're still waiting. You you have this idea of like, well, I'm I'm still waiting on something. Not now. Maybe later. <laughs> that kind of thing. In in this particular artwork, she's kind of she's meditating. She thinks she's doing the right thing. She's uh, got these three cups in front of her, um, but there's this miraculous cup popping up behind her and she's not even paying attention to it because she's too busy meditating right so this can mean that you're kind of refusing uh, to go down some particular path that is available to you and it may be that you're kind of hung up on other things that are not going to work out and you're you're kind of uh, putting a lot of energy into things that are not going to serve you but you're like missing this golden opportunity uh, and so I, I think that well, when we come down here and find your advice card is the Ace of Swords, this is to 
to tell you to take action, to do some new thing, to take some kind of action. But it's also, it's the ace, right? So it's a possible, a small action. So this is maybe asking you, how do you take like baby steps towards your goal? Um, and to try to mature this here Knight of Cups um, to, to make him more effective, to get him a little bit more, you know, out of the clouds and down to reality and make things happen. What is the small baby step that you can take that guarantees that you move towards your goal? Um, and so this is right now a, a wonderful time to, to get going, to get active on that. If there's a way for you to well, you know, like, so I wanted to do a tarot card reading channel. I wanted to do that. So at first I was like, well, how am I ever going to be good enough to do that? And, and then I kind of just decided, well, I'm just going to do it. And I started doing that about three years ago and it was way more successful than I thought it would be. But ever since then, I've been learning more and more and I went through a little hiatus, but you have to just kind of dive in and do some things um, to get to get going, to know what to do. Um, you kind of have to, you know, they say fake it till you make it. Uh, I don't really like the way that sounds because you're not really faking it. The only way to really get good at something is to do it, to, to try it, you're, you know, and then you're going to fail, but you'll learn from those failures. So this is just an invitation that the time is now. If you've been waiting, if you haven't been uh, actually active and it, there is also, like I said, this this idea that maybe you've been mentally active about this. You've wanted to do something. You've wanted to get some project off the ground, but you have not really physically put the action in. You haven't really been doing it. You haven't gone for it. You've you've been maybe thinking about it a lot, but you haven't really done it. Now is the time to do something. Now is the time to actually physically make something happen. So, uh, and and that is probably going to work out good for you if you kind of take this time right now to do it. So that's about it for that third reading. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please do leave them. And, uh, you know, I, I like to do these readings every day. I think this is something I'm going to continue doing. So let me know what you think about that. But I also do have my uh, longer readings if you're interested in those as well. So please like and subscribe if you got anything out of this today and check back in tomorrow and I will see you guys on the flip side.